So I'm playing this game over Steam uh, in Linux Ubuntu using the Proton compatibility layer. In this one, we're going to decide about attacking Genghis Khan. So I see the worker over there. That's worth 60 hammers. As opposed to, uh, I noticed the hill where uh, I could put a mine. I've got a lot of grassland. This will make a good cottage city. At least 10, 10 food neutral sites would make a good cottage city. So taking the worker, uh, he's worth 60 hammers. Each archer is worth 25. So that worker was worth about two archers to me. And he and Genghis Khan loses two archers, technically, if he ha he's going to replace the worker. So I need to put a few hammers into barracks to prevent hammer loss, hammer decay. Ten turns, if you don't build an item that you put hammers into and you'll lose hammers. So now I'm going to go into the forest, which is 50% defense. And I'm going to see what he has in his capital. Ah, he has a warrior, so I'm pretty safe there. Uh, it's about three units per defensive unit. Probably two arch bowmen can defeat one warrior in there, I would think. I'm going to build a road to him so I can get to him quicker with whatever units I build. Time is the important thing here. So I can build a few bowmen before the barracks. Uh, I'm going to lose them anyway. Um, usually you lose a couple of your first people while you weaken him. I go on to the hill there uh, just in case. I don't want to lose the worker. That's uh, an advantage that I've gained. The corn down there, uh, there's no defense in that tile, although it is across a river. And I'm just running with the worker. I'm also moving the warrior towards the capital. The warrior is not as strong as the bowman. I'll sit him in the capital. If you're you get one happy if you unhappy if you don't have somebody with your people in the capital. And also I should have somebody defending there. The bowman is protecting the worker. I don't want to lose the unit at this point, the advantage that I gained. So I am escorting the worker out of there. And I'm also moving the warrior. I'm, I'm going to look to see what that dark area is there. I still have the 50% defense in the uh, woods. He had a warrior, so I'm pretty safe. And now I have two workers. That road will get finished in one turn. Also, the workers will let me chop uh, the forest when I get bronze working in only three turns. So I'm going to chop the forest on the hill first and put a mine there, which will give me extra hammers uh, towards building bowmen. The forests, when you chop them, give you 20 hammers before mathematics which is most of an archer, 20 hammers. Uh, archers are 25 hammers. I'll move the bowman into his territory. It's a little safer. And uh, I am going to move the warrior. Uh, since I met Wilhelm Van Orange, I'm going to check my espionage. I don't want too much espionage on Genghis Khan because he's not going to last long. So why waste points on somebody that I expect to wipe out very soon. Now I'll head to that hill first. So 
So as long as I don't have 10 turns away from the barracks, I won't lose any hammers in it. So he built an archer there. So it's about three units, three art archers per archer on flat land. So I'll need at least, I would like at least six units for his two defensive units. About three per. I don't have bronze working yet, so I'll just build a road. He has cows and corn. So he has food for that capital. And the cows also give some hammers. A little bit of food, a little bit of hammers. So I got bronze working. And I see as arch an archer in there. He's building archers. I probably will want promoted archers for this. And while I'm chopping those trees, I'll probably go in revolution. So at least I'll get something done while I switch so I can whip stuff if I want to. Chopping those trees would get me the barracks much quicker. I get plus 100%, so if I chop 20 trees, I get 20 hammers. And the 100% for barracks would make it 40 hammers. Okay, so he does have a lot of tundra there, but he does have food. The corn, irrigated corn. So I put the warrior in the capital, a little bit of defense, and we'll keep one person from being unhappy in the uh, city. Let me go to my uh, to a population of five. So right now I'm getting four hammers a turn. So it takes more than six turns per archer without chopping trees. So I certainly want to generate more hammers to get the bowmen quicker. And the barracks will give a promotion, which will help them out against the archers that Genghis Khan has. See the 52 hammers this turn from the chopping and the overflow. Uh, now all my units are going to come out with the promotion because of the barracks. I can build a mine on that hill. And I can begin chopping the grassland trees, which will later, the grasslands, will mostly become cottages. They're food neutral. Two food feeds one population, so I can work cottages on that land. So the pottery that I'm building will give me uh, the ability to put cottages on there. And chop 20 trees, five hammers in the capital would give me an archer every turn that I chop trees, a bowman. So I'll get rid of that road and I'll watch the gold corn and cow see what he does and watch what he builds in that city so it looks like he has three units in that city now so i'll need nine units to take it because i'm estimating about three units per unit in the city especially with those archers defending there 
At least he's on flat land. I see the floodplains look pretty good down there. And I see he has some hills and, uh, of course, the hill, the hills with the gold. So I'm growing in three turns. So with that mine, that's three hammers on a grassland hill and one food. So I'll need the food from the farm to make that hill food neutral. That's why we have the another reason we have the farm there. And if I want to put something on the marble, I'll need another farm or those spices. So two archers and a warrior, probably about eight units to take that city right now. And uh, since those per um, archers are for have fortification and the percent defense in this and the, of the culture and in the city, I would like at least three archers per one of his archers. And I'd like a promotion on them. The barracks were cheaper for me anyway. So now I'm getting at least five hammers a turn. And uh, that is one bowman every five turns because they're 25 hammers. And actually, this comes to six, so it's a little every four turns plus one, a little bit more. So when I get that population up, I should be able to build bowmen. Uh, it shouldn't take me longer than every four turns. And I should be able to get an archer almost every turn this way, chopping the trees. We need to build these faster than Genghis Khan builds his defense. I want to grow my population so I can work the maximum number of tiles here while I'm chopping these. Next to the river, chopping those trees, if I put a cottage there, it'll have an extra gold. So I noticed Tokugawa and Wilhelm Van Orange are building espionage on each other. And Genghis Khan and Wilhelm Van Orange are espionaging each other. But Tokugawa and Genghis Khan are not. So I have three bowmen built so far. And build, I'll get another one next turn. That'll be four and one near the capital. We'll make five bowmen. And I would like nine since he has three defensive units. Pottery hath not the potter power over the clay to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor. Okay, still chopping. Notice my population's four now. I'm making sure that I'm 
my people are assigned to the best tiles. So two archers and a warrior. So that's not nine units would be good for that, I think. So we're almost there. I like to have a second city by at least around turn 50. So we're going to probably take that city a little after turn 50, which is not too bad. The reason I'm building mysticism is because when I take the city, I will want to put a monument in there, which will expand my borders, give me culture to expand my borders in the new city. So that is why I felt like mysticism should be built. It's also one of the starting texts, so it's fairly uh, low in cost. So I have no idea if he's going to build extra archers in his city. So even after I get the bowmen that I need, I will continue to build bowmen uh, in case he puts more defensive units in there. Because, of course, while I'm building, he's trying to build, but my rate should be much faster than him. I took the worker that he would use. So that should slow his rate, and that extra worker should double, pre pretty much double my rate. So you notice the overflow there. Comes from the extra hammers that are used on the previous bowmen. Ah, he built a worker. So two archers, one warrior. I still need nine units. So I have, what, about seven here? Almost there. So we'll start building a cottage so that when we're done with the war, uh, we could work some gold producing, commerce producing tiles. Okay, I think I need one more bowman, but I'm, even after, we'll continue to produce them. The fact that, uh, yeah, so he built something else, so that's good. He wasted his hammers there. While we are focused on attacking him, putting all our hammers into our units. So I'll go to animal husbandry next. Uh, animal husbandry and pottery give writing. So they'll make writing cheaper. Also, I need animal husbandry for those cows there. 
So if I want to be able to build on those soon, uh, fairly soon. So animal husbandry seems to be the logical science to build here, as I'm pretty sure we will go after and take him uh, soon. Whenever you have all the prerequisite techs, I think the next tech is cheaper. So three, four, five, six, uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and I'm still growing to my maximum um, that my happies allow. Eight a turn would give me um, archers and just a little more than three, three a turn. That should still exceed his the rate at which he produces them at this point, even without my chopping anymore. And you see um, the chopping the forests and increasing the population uh, give you more health problems, which decreases your food. That was the green, the green face in my city queue. You see the green face on the star? So two archers, a warrior, and a worker. see three four five six seven eight nine so I have nine now so we are ready he has three defensive units um, I like to have at least three per defensive unit and if he builds more I'm gonna keep on building some here so just in case I could whip them, but I'm not gonna do that. I wanna keep, I'm gonna keep my population up. I'll need masonry to get the marble there. I should probably, um, so I think the spices and the farm will give me enough food to work the marble and the hill. I'm not using binary research. A lot of people like to use 100% and 0%. I think that maximizes the research. Um, maybe we'll talk about that later. So still three units. But just in case, we'll just keep on building Bowman. Not going to waste any uh, time with something else. We need to win this. And the extra promotion should uh, be enough. Okay. So first I'll get rid of my unpromoted unit. I'm probably going to learn, lose the first couple of units. That almost always happens. So be prepared to throw some away. And that's why I didn't need the barracks for the first couple. I expected to lose them anyway. I just hope that they damage his archers adequately so that my other units will be able to win. So I lost one so far. So we'll give him a promotion and try again. I lost two units now. But he has some that are injured. Notice the percent, my odds are going up. Three units I've lost now. But 
now he's injured. My odds are going up. Four units. Now my odds are up at 83%. Finally, 1-1. One, one. Lost four units so far. Notice I'm using most of my units here to take that city. So my three per person is pretty close. I had two left over there. So we wiped out Genghis Khan and I'm building a monument so I can pop my borders um, as quick as possible. That's the early way to get culture if you're not creative. And so I've got um, some bowmen. I've got those workers. I just got another worker from him. So now we're actually in a pretty good position. I see those three hills there. So he's got production and food. I am paying some unit supply. I don't know, do I need all those units outside my borders? Um, well, for now I'll drop, I'll pull one out of there, out of being outside of my borders. And then if we look back, we'll see we're not paying anything for unit supply. So, Uh, I should probably explore with the other units. We need to block off Tokugawa and Wilhelm Van Orange. So we'll need to settle where I think Wilhelm Van Orange is below me. And I think Tokugawa is to my left. So some of these archers should be moved. I need to adjust the espionage now. Um, I think I'll just put an equal amount of espionage to both of those for now. Although I suspect Tokugawa will be my next target. So I got floodplains down there. I've got that corn. I've got the cows, got the gold. Actually, Karakorium is probably a better capital than mine. Uh, although I do have all that grassland for cottages. So I think with the three hills, this here, my old capital will be a cottage city. And the other one will be a production city with the hills and the cows. But this has some modest production here. So I don't think it'll be, uh, I think it'll be a good, good cottage city. The road, if I connect them with the roads, that'll give me some trade routes. And I see the pigs up there. There should be, uh, I could build a city. There's two of the uh, wines over there. Three hills, that's three production each. That's nine production for those hills, if I work them. And the corn, uh, should feed those hills. I don't need to keep on producing bowmen. I have enough for now. So what what should I work on next? Let's see, um, there's six people. And for gold and manufacturing, I'm ranked third and first. I have seven units right now, and I'm building another that'll make eight units. 
um, three workers. So uh, three workers, two of them I got from him. That's 120 hammers worth of workers. I lost four archers. Those are 100 hammers. So I profited 20 hammers. And the city itself takes a, a, a settler. So I've definitely gained in this war, I believe. So thank you. And let me know what you think for the next video, what you think I should do.